Hello everybody, my name is Code Blue, and welcome back to another Code Blue tutorial. Now in this video, rather than doing um, kind of uh, an overview of a function or you know the general kind of stuff that I do, we're actually going to be working on a project together, um, which will be a basic chat application, kind of like Facebook, if you want to call it that, uh, where users will be able to message um, each other in kind of this global chat room. So it's going to work the exact same way as the normal chat system works. Uh, but I'm doing it one so that uh, I can kind of explain the structure of add-ons because I know a lot of people um, are confused about that. Like they don't understand how uh, the add-on folder emulates your Gary's mod folder. Um, but also because a lot of people still ask me questions about networking. Um, and hopefully this will clear a few things up for you in terms of that. So what we're going to do is if you go into your Gary's mod folder here and then you go into your add-ons folder, you're going to want to create a new folder in here. I'm going to call this uh, chat add-on, okay? And then inside here, we're gonna create another folder. Actually, before I create this folder, I'm gonna explain to you kinda how this folder works. So if we go into our Gary's mod folder, you'll notice how we have a Lua folder, materials, etc, etc. If we go into our Lua folder, we have more stuff such as an auto-run folder. If we go in there, we have even more stuff. <laughs> That's essentially what our add-ons folder is doing here. It's emulating that. So if we go in here and we create a Lua folder, it's just going to work the exact same way as a Lua folder in our Gary's mod directory. And if inside of here we create a folder called auto run, that's going to work the exact same way as auto run too. So inside here, we'll create two more folders, client, and we're also going to create a server folder. Now we'll start by doing the client first. So we'll create in here a CL underscore chat add on dot Lua. Um, the name doesn't really matter that much. Um, but now that we have that, I'm going to go ahead and um, drag that onto Sublime there. So let's start by, um, let's code the function uh, to open the chat box. Okay. I say chat box, it's going to essentially be a window. Um, also, you're going to have to excuse the VGUI. Uh, it's going to be rushed. It's going to be messy um, because this is not a tutorial specifically on that. Um, so anyway, one thing we're going to do first is we're going to make our rich text box global. Okay. So we're going to set that to nil. And we're also going to do one more, which is called is open. And we're going to set that to false. Okay. So is open is going to determine whether our chat box is open or not. And RT box is basically a variable that's going to store our rich text box um, because we're going to need to reference it later on outside of this function. But let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to do local VGUI. Um, whoops. Sorry about that. Local frame. Actually, you know what? I'm going to write this up and then I'm going to I'm going to start uh, then just to make it quicker on you guys. Okay, and there we go. So essentially what this is, um, it's just a frame with a panel that stores a rich text box. You'll notice how this rich text box variable is set here. The global one that we made up here is set here um, so that we can reference it outside of this open chat function, uh, which we'll need to do later on, you'll see. So we also have entry, which is just a text entry field. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say hook.add uh, on player chat. Now, um, open chat menu, we'll just call it that. Uh, for those of you who are wondering, um, on player chat is basically the client side version of um, player say. So whenever any player sends a message, like a normal chat message, our client is going to pull this hook and it's going to pass the player that set it and the text that they set. So the first thing we're going to want to do is make sure that the player is equal to us. Because if the player is not us, then we don't want to do anything. But if the player is us, then we want to check if string.lower text. So that's going to turn, if text has any capital letters in it, it's going to turn them all lowercase. And we're going to set that equal, to, we're going to see if it's equal to exclamation mark chat. And if it is, then we're going to call the open chat function like that. So what I mean by this is like, let's say in chat, I typed exclamation mark chat like that. Even though it's got a capital C in it, because of this string dot lower, it's going to be all lowercase and it's going to be equal to that. Um, it's just a good habit to do uh, because then it will help you do it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to say whenever our frame opens. Okay, so whenever the open chat is called, we want to set is open. Whoops, is open equals true. So that's going to then turn on this variable here to be true to say, oh, hey, the chat menu is open. 
Now, for those of you who don't know, we're, we're also going to need to know when it's closed. So I'm going to say frame dot on close uh, equals function. For those of you who don't know how to override um, panel functions like this, basically all I'm saying is when on close is called, it calls this function and s would be itself. Um, so then I could say s remove, which is going to then, whoops, self remove, which is going to remove the panel. But before I do that, I'm going to want to set is open equals false. So what this essentially does, uh, s.remove closes it just as it normally would be, but we override the function so that we can first set this is open variable to false so we know that the, the UI is no longer open. Um, the reason why we do this is for later on, whenever we receive a message, if the UI is not open, then we don't want to update the UI because it, it's not open, of course. Um, so anyway, so now that we have this, uh, here's the panel, this and this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this and I'm going to launch my Gary's mod and we are going to see uh, how this looks in game. Okay, so now that we're in game, if we do our exclamation mark chat, as you can see, the window now opens and we have this UI. Um, we have this text entry box down here that we can type and do. And we have the panel here with the rich text box on it. So now let's go back into our add-on and now we're going to go and do the server side. So I'm going to go into, yeah, was it? Yeah. So let's go into the server folder now. Let's create a new file and we'll call this SV underscore chat add-on, whoops, chat add-on dot Lua. So now that we have this one, let's open it up in Sublime. And inside here now, this is going to be all of the server management stuff. So. There's going to be a few things that we want to do first, and we want to define two new network strings. So we want to add network string, and we're going to do one, which is send message. Okay. And we'll do another one called receive message. Okay. So now for those of you who don't know what network strings are, you should have covered it in um, my network library uh, tutorial that I did. But essentially, um, you can't send any messages back and forth to client on the server unless they are declared for a network string first. Um, so that's all they are. But what we're going to do is we're going to set up a net.receive and we're going to say whenever we, we receive the message, send message, uh, we're going to do a function which is the length of the message and the player because the player is important. So we're going to say that the message is net.readString and this will make sense in a minute when we write the string. And we'll, uh, so now that we've got the message, now we can say net.start. This time we're going to start receive message. We're going to say net.write, whoops, write string. The string will be the message variable that's above. And we're also going to then write an entity, and that entity will be PLY. Okay, now I'll explain why we do that. But essentially, uh, the write string is the message that was sent, and PLY is the player that sent that message. So, of course, Whenever us as a client sends the message, we send the message, send message to the server. The server then receives that message. It then reads the message that we sent in it. And then it goes ahead and starts a new message called receive message. It writes that message that we sent. It writes our player because we were the people who sent it. And then it's going to do net.broadcast. Okay. And net.broadcast is basically going to send this net message to every player who's connected to the server at the time. So. Now that we've done this, let's go back to our client and let's set up a net.receive function. So we're going to say net.receive. Whenever we receive the receive message, I should have named these something different because it's getting a little confusing, but there we go. Uh, so we'll do function like that. So now we can go ahead and we can say that the message is net.readString. Whoops. Net.readString. Now remember the reason why we do read string is because we write the string here. The next thing we need to do is say sender is equal to net dot read player, uh, read entity. Sorry. So now that we have the sender, which we write here, remember, uh, we can go ahead and we're going to create a variable here. Now I want you to know this is not a very good way to do it. Uh, not so much the networking, but the way how I'm handling the messages and displaying them is a bad way to do it. But we're going to create a, a variable up here called messages. I'm going to set equal to an empty string. And whenever we receive a message, what we're going to do is we're going to say messages is equal to messages uh, dot dot. And we're going to add a new line. So for those of you who don't know, if you do a uh, backslash with an N, that means new line in Lua. So it's going to put a new line there. 
Um, and then what we'll do is we'll then continue on to get the sender's name. So we'll say sender name. And then we're going to add a space and a colon, just like that. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to add the message that was sent. Just like that. Okay, so essentially, whenever we receive a new message, we create a new line, put the name, colon, the message, and we're essentially appending it to the messages. So whenever we receive multiple messages, they build up in this variable as a string. Um, then whenever we've done that, we're going to first want to check. Uh, like, we're going to want to say RT box set text because remember this is our rich text box and we can set the text to messages and that's going to then display the message in that box but we don't want to do that if the ui is not open otherwise we're going to get an error so we can say if is open then and only then will we update the text inside that text box so this is our receive function done for the client so we read the message the person who sent it we then write the message to this string and as long as the UI is open, we then update the text on the UI. Now, there's one last stage to this. Um, but one thing I'm also going to do is whenever we open the UI, I'm going to say RT box. Whoops. RT box, uh, which I actually made a mistake here. Um, this is supposed to be lowercase. So if you made the same mistake as me, then correct that or name it whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Um, but after we've done that, we're then going to get the RT box and we're going to set its text set text um, to be the messages variable that is up here. Now, what this is going to do is whenever we open our UI, it's going to automatically display the messages there rather than it being blank until we receive a message. I hope that makes sense. Um, so then the last thing to do is actually send the message itself. Uh, so, of course, we're going to do this on the client. We're going to get the entry um, variable, which contains the text entry. And what we're going to do is we're going to say entry dot on enter. Okay. Now, for those of you who don't know what that does, on enter basically gets called whenever you are typing in the text box and you hit the enter key. Um, then what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, function self, just like that. And we're going to, first of all, we're going to say uh, net.start. And we're going to start the send message because we're going to send it. We're going to write a string. And the string that we're going to write is s get text. Now, whoops, not texture, text. For those of you who are a bit confused right now as what S is, um, S is self essentially, and it's passed whenever the on enter gets called. So S is the text box that was on entered, if that made sense. Um, so anyway, once we've got the text and we write it as a string, because that's our message, we're going to say net.send to server, which is then going to send that to the server. And we're also going to say set text. So we're going to set the text box's text to nothing now so that our message goes away. And after we've done that, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to say request, whoops, request focus. Now, the reason why is because when you hit enter on a text box, it loses its focus, which means that you're no longer typing in the text box. So all we do is we re-request it so that we're still in that text box. So now let's save this. Let's save the server and let's actually go test this and see if it'll work. So we're going to quickly reload. And now that we're in the server, we can do exclamation mark chat. And we could type hello world. And there you go. As you can see, our message now displayed in the rich text box. That message was sent to the server and then sent to all of the clients. Of course, I'm the only client. Um, but if you was also on the server and you open up chat, you would see all of the message. So we could say hello world. Uh, and we could spam as much as we want. And if other players was typing too, all of their messages would show up in here too because of that magical uh, net message system. So I hope that that makes sense. Um, if you have any questions, because this was quite a lengthy video and I can assume that some of you got confused, feel free to leave a comment and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Or even join my TeamSpeak. Uh, my TeamSpeak's in the description of every one of my videos. And if you join and I'm there, as long as I'm not busy, I will try my best to help you. But that's it. So thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next video.